Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 24th of May 2011. On this date, 468 years ago, founder of the heliocentric solar system, Nicholas Copernicus, died. You'll be pleased to know that the date of Armageddon has now been postponed to the 21st of October 2011, so now you have five more months to give all your money away to this California sect. Unfortunately for me, that means I still have to buy my wife an anniversary present. Oh well, you can't win them all. Returning briefly to the topic of this video, the sun, let's see what's been going on with the sunspot region. The region that I was talking about yesterday in the southwest has disappeared. Just shortly after it was numbered 1221, region 1220 is right on the west limb and will be gone by tomorrow. Region 1216 remains a single large spot. The small spots that were developing yesterday in the trailer region seem to have completely gone. Region 1218, according to NOAA, has disappeared, but I can still see a couple of spots there. And Region 1219 has also disappeared. So things have been getting very much more quiet. We can see from the SDO HMI data, and we can see the decay in all of these active regions. Sunspots are disappearing, and the magnetic regions are getting simpler and weaker, which means they will produce less activity. Now I'm going to use the Helio Viewer software, the link is in the description box below, to look at one area in more detail. As the sun has been very quiet, I thought I'd like to show you the birth of an active region. Here's a three-day sequence of the HMI data taken near the west limb. We will see the emergence of growth of region 1220. The new spots appear just to the left of the centre of the frame, and they continue to grow and spread for quite some time. But initially they're just a group of small spots, nothing particularly exciting. However, as time goes by, even though the region is approaching the west limb, we can see that the spots become more organised and larger. So this is developing into a major region, and by the time it returns in two weeks' time, it should be something worth watching. If it doesn't run out of steam in the meantime, that is. But for every region that develops into a major sunspot region like this, there's probably at least a dozen that don't, and it's hard to tell which is which at this stage. After yesterday's very promising rise in the X-ray background, with the uh, decay of all these active regions, we are seeing the background fall back below the B1 level. Next, let's take a look at the uh, data from the SDO AIA instrument and see what's going on in the corona and in the transition region. As usual, the corona movie shows a great deal going on, but there are no major events occurring. In the Helium-304 image, we see eruptions going on all over the sun, except of course in the region that I predicted would erupt yesterday. The SOHO coronagraphs show quite a few events going on, but they're all relatively minor and faint. With so many things going on, it's hard to tag which region was producing what. For example, were they on the near side or the far side of the Sun? Which is critically important in determining whether such events will be geo-effective or not. So let's find out using the stereo data. For this we're going to use the stereo A data, which puts the Earth to the left in these images. And we can see there are two major events. One heads towards the Earth, and one heads away. So it is possible that one of these events could reach the Earth. But that won't happen for a while yet. So let's take a look at the ACE data and see what's been going on in geospace. And we can see that the solar wind has dropped its density to about 0.1 proton per cubic centimetre. The NOAA 15 satellite shows us that the auroral zone is quiet, and that the KP index is varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then, the sunspot number has fallen to 37, the X-ray background has dropped to the A8 level. The radio sun remains at 85 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has dropped to about 360 kilometers per second, while its density has dropped to about 0.1 proton per cubic centimeter, and the KP index remains quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that there's a very low chance of any sort of major flaring. The sunspot number will probably go lower. CMAs remain quite likely, but the chance of a geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is very low. In the slightly longer term, looking at the composite image of the corona, we see that we have a region due back in a couple of days' time over the east limb. But we can also see there are some very bright regions about five days behind the east limb, but we should be seeing the first evidence of those in the next three days. If you would like more details about what's going, if you would like more details about what's going on on the sun. Please follow the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of The Sun Today, go to my channel and they're all listed there, along with some of my videos on global warming. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.